Yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hand over for the for the next um, for one more segment. One more segment. Um, it says it's retail survival. Can you believe it? Retail survival. It's business retail and setting yourself up um, for success to survive. Make more money while you sleep. So who is this? Mr. Well. Determine who is it? It is. Well, keep us in suspense. Uh, well, I'll try to not to keep us in suspense any, anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over and can you give a massive Q Corner warm welcome to Jill Shortread. Here she is. Hello. Everybody say hi. Hello. Hello, Jill. How are you? Ah, there I am. I'm there looking at myself on like four screens. Kind of, <laughs> how many times do you want to see yourself <laughs> i don't know well i mean i actually had to put on makeup and clothes this morning me too me too <laughs> i yeah well <laughs> you know we've all kind of become a little complacent and lazy i think these yeah. last few days it's easy so, yes it is well, what we're going to do is, because we're running a little bit behind, and um, we're running about 20 minutes behind, and uh, we don't want to make it any longer, so what we'll do is we're going to get out of your hair and leave you to these wonderful people. Um, if you guys have any questions for Jill during this talk, what you need to do is send them in the chat, and we shall put them up on Jill's screen and put them to her, okay? All right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, guys. Go Thank take a nap. you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah I did. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jill. Awesome. Enjoy. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Um, as you can see, um, I'm housebound, which is um, obviously not lovely, as everybody else is. Um, we have stopped as of last week doing our, um, obviously, doing our business. So, um, a little bit about me, obviously, Jill Shortread. I am right now in Charleston, South Carolina. And last night, our governor declared that all non-essentials had to be closed. But the week prior, um, our mayor had declared that we have pretty much been in housebound mode since last week. Um, a few days prior to that, um, we had been at a stay-at-home order also, but we could still make deliveries that were no contact, um, and the shop could still be open for curbside pickup. Um, <clears throat> what we had done was we had enabled our um, online ordering so our clients could go ahead and pre-order, um, and they get a text message when their order is ready and then come on in and pick up curbside, which was kind of sweet. So anyway, so um, that's where we're at and all this um, global mess, I guess. Um, but it's really not that big of a deal, I don't think. Um, we've been in business a long time, so we have survived 9-11. Um, so we've operated through that. <clears throat> we've also <clears throat> operated through um, the last recession. And... Um, you know, we've been able to bounce back from both of those. So um, I think we'll be able to um, bounce back from this too. I just think it's gonna have us all um, kind of think differently about the way we operate our businesses um, from the standpoint of, you know, social selling, um, using social media, going ahead and, um, enabling online ordering and um, how you're going to handle retail and you know how we're going to handle employees um, coming back to work um, so i do have a staff um, everybody up oh, there goes my garbage truck um, everybody um, is obviously at home right now uh, i did opt to stop or payroll or at least my payroll for me personally a few weeks ago to keep everybody on up until the very last minute and now um they have gone ahead and um filed for their unemployment um benefits 
and then we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, all right, so let's see. So, um, all right, so anyway, about our sh the way we run business. Um, the way we run business is our, our business is broken up into three key components. Um, we obviously do event decor, um, which most people do. Um, we then also do the gift deliveries, um, which we either accept online or over the telephone. And then um, the third component is retail. So the only thing that we actually sell is balloons and absolutely nothing else. Um, we had just um, gotten ready to do an expansion. Um, we kind of lucked out with not having the full lease executed yet. But um, once we get bounced back from this, hopefully in the next you know few weeks, months, however long this takes, um, you know, my game plan is to still go through with that and to um, expand out the shop and add the extra offices. So, um, so that's how our business is broken up. We, uh, I'm seeing comments. I don't see them on the other side. Okay, cool. Um, so, so, our customers are still calling us, and I did have our phones forwarded to my cell phone, so I'm still able to answer and field those calls. But what I am doing is when our customers are calling and they are being super supportive about us not being able to do stuff for them, is that I'm obviously getting their name, their phone number, and their email address because I want to send them a thank you. Um, along with a coupon um, or an incentive, um, whichever way you want to look at it or whatever verbiage you want to use, for actually taking the time to call us. So when all this lifts and we're able to go back to business as usual, they have an incentive to come back to us. Um, and then, you know, we can reach out to them and say, hey, um, you know, I know it's been, you know, a few weeks and you were looking for an order for, you know, to welcome a baby home or whatever it was going on. Um, we can go back to doing business as usual. Did you still want to proceed order? And thank you so much um, for thinking of us. Um, so that's um, how we're working in the moment. We also um, obviously are monitoring our emails. We are trying to actively um, communicate with everybody who had orders that were already on the roster. Um, we have issued refunds. I know this is a sticky point for some people, um, but we have issued the refunds for anybody who did have events that had to completely cancel them. Um, I really think this is of nobody's fault. Um, hopefully you did not already go ahead and kind of spend the money that, to reissue a refund for somebody, but um, we did issue it because it's better to have goodwill like that. Um, it's not really their fault. And I understand people with contracts and cancellation clauses and all that kind of stuff, but is it really worth um, possibly the bad press and the um, argument you could get into with somebody over, um, not giving back a deposit. Um, now, obviously we have a ton of postponements. Hopefully we'll get those back in the fall. Um, we've lost our prom season and um, I'm pretty sure graduation season will be effective because we graduate on the earlier side here <clears throat> than most people. Um, so anyway, so um, selling. So. As far as um, online, we did enable our store right before all this hit. Um, it had been in our um, back burner for a while, and all we concentrated on for the last um, like week and a half before we shut down two weeks was having everybody uploading product. There was no product descriptions. There was nothing. We were just enabling, enabling, enabling the online ordering and every single day. Um, new product was just being uploaded on that. And the cool thing about it is your customers were able to, or my customers were able to order overnight. So I would get an email 
um, that said, hey, a new order came in, or um, we use square point of sale. So the um, girls in the front retail were able to see orders pop up on the screen. Um, and then it gave the, um, um, the customer was able to track their order, almost like a Domino's pizza delivery. And then it said, you know, your order has been received, your order is being prepared. And then once the order was ready, the girls were able to hit, um, your order is ready for pickup. And then they got a, um, they got an email or a text message or however they wanted to do it. And then um, they got notified that their order was ready for pickup and they could just come in. And then what we ended up doing was um, if they wanted no, um, they did not want to come into the shop for curb um, for curbside pick, or, and they wanted curbside pickup, sorry. Um, they just had to call the shop and say we were out front um, in a special, we had a special loading spot um, waiting for them, for them to come in and, um, and um, get their order brought out to them. So um, that is how we did that. Now, as far as um, it's early, obviously our sun is just coming up um, for us. Um, okay, let's see. So um, as far as marketing, so um, we are aggressively marketing, marketing and just because we are closed does not necessarily mean that I'm gonna stop um, um messaging and talking with my customers so we are um very active on social media we are but that does not necessarily mean that i'm posting events um i do not want my customers to see events that have a ton of people in them even though you know i would like to do that because that's sending the wrong message that possibly you are out there doing stuff um and it kind of is going to wake people out at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so just be really careful if that's something that you're going to do, that you're not posting pictures, that you're in a convention center or anything along those lines or at this big birthday party or wedding. I do see a lot of um, wedding planners posting weddings and stuff like that. And you see all these people in it at the moment and you stop to think like, are they actually doing weddings right now? Um, you know, and you've got 50, 100 people there. And right now, I don't know about anybody else, but we have a, um, we have a um, three person limit. So in our area, um, the governor enacted that um, three people or more. And, um, you know, you can kind of get into trouble around here right now where they're issuing citations and they're breaking up groups. Um, and everything. So um, just be careful over what kind of messages you're sending out to people um, as far as your pictures. Um, but obviously make sure that you tell your customers that you are still here, um, but be active on the social media. So, um, you know, we're going in and liking pictures. So people just keep seeing us and reinforcing that. Um, you know, making comments and all that kind of stuff. And people kind of like to see like, you know, th this is real life right now. So people like to see that I'm in my living room um, or that we're working from home or that, um, I don't know, let's see if you can, I don't know if you can see. Look, I brought home all sorts of goodies. So that's, um, you know, that's real life at the moment um, for us that, you know, I have boxes and boxes of balloons here so we can um, work on stuff and create stuff um, and be ready to move forward. Um, now is definitely the time, and I'm sure I've heard, I've not had the opportunity to listen to um, a whole lot of the, um, um, the videos and stuff that have been going on, but um, now is the time to go through and get yourself prepared. And I really, really think if you hone in on your marketing skills and want to see some of what you're sharing at the moment um, on social media, is that the question? So, um, 
to give us some ideas of what you're sharing. Um, again, sharing on social media is the question. I'm not really sure what the question is. Um, so we do have an Instagram, we do have Pinterest, um, we do have um, Facebook on social media. Okay. Um, so our social media is Charleston Balloon. Um, you can go over there and just see um, what we have been sharing. Um, most of it has been um, in our stories. So if you follow us, we've done stuff in our stories, just little like tidbits. I will tell you the one thing I have been doing, um, because I do like to blog, I don't do it as often as I'd like to, but I have been doing a um, photo diary since we've been housebound um, so that we can go back and be like, I mean, it's been everything from, um, you know, this is what we did today to, um, you know, how honestly not to, I'm gonna use the word, have a breakdown of any sort, but has have gone to like doing yoga and meditating in the morning to, hey, look at what I actually made today, meaning cooking wise, because although I can cook, I choose not to cook. Um, and, um, you know, that we've made cookies and cakes and we're probably all gonna put on like, talk about freshman 15. This will be like Corona 20 um, in the um, amount of food that we're all eating. Um, you know, I've gone to Costco one day and the lines were astronomical or, hey, I found toilet paper today and all that good stuff. So um, I've been taking pictures um, throughout this whole thing to be able to share little snippets of what life actually is like. Um, and then as far as the social media, like I said, it was Charleston Balloon. Um, if um, you want to go over there, and that is both for um, um, Facebook and that is both on Instagram. So let's see what else we got. Um, and so, as far as social media, too, um, you have a captive audience right now. There's only so much Netflix that everybody can watch. So everybody is constantly on their phone. So the more you post and the more you do, the chances that you're popping up there um, are really good um, because it's just, it, it's a constant cycle. Everybody's just kind of glued to their phone right now between the um, trying to stay focused on what's going on with the news, um, and everything else. And then the other thing is with our online shop, um, right now we're working really hard to get our social media selling um, connected. So our customers will be able to go on their phone and you know hit, hit the product and hey, um, they want to order this garland or um, this bouquet and just with a one click be able to go ahead and do that. Um, and not have to necessarily wait for us to um, go ahead and move forward and actually answer telephones or for them to actually come in the shop. Um, I fully, fully believe that we will all get through this, that we will actually all um, survive um, business-wise and that um, we can actually come out even stronger and bigger and that we can actually grow our companies. I firmly, firmly believe that because we are in a happy business and people definitely need that distraction right now. Um, you know, I have not, you know, I'll, I'll use for an example, like, gosh knows I'm going to have to go in a few weeks and go and get my hair done. I haven't had my nails done in weeks and all that stuff, but I'm not going to stop doing that stuff just because I have to worry about everything. I'm still going to spend that money and people um, are going to want to spend the money on their kids because I hate to use the word like guilt is a motivating factor, but it really is like, if your kid missed out on their birthday over this, I'm pretty sure you're going to somehow make it up to them. All these poor kids that have missed out on their proms that are going to possibly miss out on their graduations and all that stuff, 
these parents are going to make that up to their kids. Um, it's just, you know, it's just the way it is. All these grandparents who cannot travel or cannot be around um, the grandkids because they're worried about getting sick, all these weddings that were canceled, all these people are gonna spend money. Um, they're probably just gonna shift the way they spend it. It may not be like these gigantic dollar amounts that we are used to, but they are definitely gonna spend the money to party when this is all lifted. Um, and I think we're in an excellent industry to be able to do that and um, move forward and actually capitalize on this. But the, I think the biggest thing is to not retreat on this and not cut back on all your spending. If you are able to go ahead and ramp up your advertising, and keep your name out there and be front and center and um, hone in on your SEO and um, push forward with, um, you know, Facebook advertising and Instagram advertising, I mean, the two of them are connected, um, you know, uploading all your Pinterest boards and getting yourself organized. You're gonna be able to come out of the gate here, strong, hard and heavy and, um, probably um, do better than um, some of the other competitors and stuff around you if you can just push through all that and really, um, like I said, make yourself known and just strengthen. I also think it's an excellent time. Like we have been, you know, this is also the other thing. So today is April Fool's Day. Um, Today was supposed to be our once a year gigantic sale. Um, we call it our um, no joke sale in which everything that we've cleared out of our back stock room was supposed to be a dollar. So um, we do this every single year. Obviously we had to change, change that up um, and we have to rethink the way we're doing it. But what we're going to what we are going to do now is we are going to take all that product and we will slowly reintroduce it into the shop because i don't want it sitting in that back stock room because it is making me absolutely no money um sitting in the stock room so what we'll do is we'll create a small um display or spinner in our shop of um these um, discontinued items for the most part. Um, it'll be very selective, it'll be very random, but um, we will bring it out there. But on the flip side of that, every single thing that we display in our shop is high, high end. So what we have are um, large confetti balloons, three foot balloons, tassels, personalization, um, bubble balloons, um, double stuffed, like really impressive higher end upscale bouquets because most people are going to walk in and they're going to see those and it's, it's got that really big wow factor. We already know that balloons have a wow factor, but these bouquets is really dope. And then what they do is the customer comes in and they see these big bouquets and that's what they want. And obviously the price tag on them is pretty substantial. We're usually talking that any floor display in our shop, with the exception of our smaller little um, like centerpieces, um, just for show pieces, usually range between $75 and $250 is a display in our shop. And then what we do is, because most customers kind of get a little sticker shocked over that, and then they start wanting to do a takeaway factor. Um, so they'll want, well, how much is it if we take out this, um, even though we know that that's the piece that they really, really want? Um, you know, and then we start bringing back the bouquet. But what happens is they actually really want that bouquet. I would say a good 80% of the time we sell those large, massive displays as is maybe minus a balloon or two because they just they want that wow factor they just really want to be able to walk out of the shop with these gigantic bouquets um, with all these tassels and streamers and ribbon and confetti and the personalization and all that um 
So, um, so then what we what we'll do is we'll we'll leave these smaller um, bouquets and balloons out that are not so special per se um, for the customer that does want um, something quick and easy. But on the flip side of that, they're going to come in and they're they're going to see these big ones. So it's like a do you want this dollar store item or do you want this something that's really specially gift item? So we usually fall somewhere in between, but like I said, majority of the time it's on this higher end side. Um, our average ticket in our shop um, right now, um, before everything hit, was $130 per customer that walked out. Um, that does not count our events. That is only for the typical customer who walks in and purchases balloons. And again, bear in mind that the only thing we do sell is balloons. So we're not selling paper goods. We're not selling greeting cards. We're not selling gift wrap. We're not selling anything except a balloon. Um, the other thing we do is um, we are really big on capturing our customers' um, information. So our POS system is a smart system. So it it automatically knows how many times a customer comes back based on either us keying them in or sometimes it's just their payment method. And we do try to um, um, consolidate so families um, have one kind of um, profile in our system. And then if it's the first time that they've shopped with us, um, we try to capture their email. Um, we do push for e-receipts on everything. Um, that's actually going to even be more important right now with um, contactless stuff that everything we do is via email or text message as far as receipts so that it's one less item that we have to touch and hand off to um, other people. Um, we're also contemplating, do we not go back to, um, I'm having a struggle with this one and I would love feedback on business cards, you know, is there going to be a point where business cards become obsolete because it's an item that you're handing back and forth between people? Um, we're up for a reorder and I think um, I'm going to hold off on those at the moment. And maybe it's a, um, a business card placard that we're going to leave on our um, point of um, our point of um, sale that people can go ahead and take a picture of. So my point of sale, so right now we, we use Square. Um, Square has a retail um, app. That's what we use for our inventory. All of our inventory is scanned in and out, including our back inventory. So um, if somebody opens, so we do not count open bags in our inventory. Um, we do have a scanner. Um, we do do a hard inventory count um, once a month um, just to make sure our numbers are correct with what's in the system. Um, every morning I get a low inventory alert um, in my email. So that tells me whatever needs to be reordered just to make sure that that is true because sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, if we do have a defective um, I. Um, we have to take it out of the system manually and uh, declare it damaged. Um, so when I get my damage reports at the end of the quarter, I know what's been, um, you know, what I need to declare as damaged product um, or if we've taken stuff out for display purposes. So I know what has been um, used for that. Um, but what will happen is once somebody goes in the back, so our stock room, um, and they, I have video walkthroughs. Um, I think it's hosted on either Balloon Friends or on the Qualitex site of when we first opened. We have not changed a whole lot the way we have the back set up. Um, so you guys can go ahead and take a look at that. Um, we do have another one coming up soon once we do the expansion in which we'll do another walkthrough. So I'll post that too. But um, we have racks and racks and racks of um, full bags of Qualitex balloons in the back. Um, what the girls will do or the staff will do is they'll go in and they'll take a bag. And once that bag is taken out of the tray, 
they now have to take it over to the point of sale system and they have to scan it out. And then, um, you know, that, that keeps up with our inventory numbers. Um, it was, it was pretty time consuming, um, to go ahead and put all those, um, SKUs in, um, and then to have individual, um, balloons also, and figure out what the best, best method is. Um, no system have we found has been 100% perfect. Um, there are some, um, uh, some tweaking, I think that could be done. Um, we do have a dedicated um, manager with Square that calls us and they're, they're constantly asking what else can we do um, to make our life easier. Um, on the order aspect though, so if a cus going back to the point of sale though, the nice thing about it is our customers besides our, all right, let me backtrack, sorry. So our customers who order online, that inventory is tracked in our point of sale system. So those numbers automatically come out and then they're able to then go ahead and pre-order. So our, we have a two hour lead time. So a customer could order right now. Well, not technically right now, but you know, could place an order right now and it would come out. When would, when would you like to pick up your order? They can actually set a date and it's based on, we have it set with our store hours. So they could order at 12 o'clock and say, I would like a three o'clock pickup today. And then um, that ticket will come up and then they can go ahead, they can go ahead and pre-order it that they're doing the same day. Or they could go ahead and order it and say, I want it in three weeks on a Saturday and I'm coming in at 10 a.m. to pick it up. So they're able to do that. And all our inventory is connected. So whatever they order online is the same thing in um, the shop. But um, the our back stock is connected in there, but not for the customer to see, if that all made sense. So our back stock sits in a separate, um, in the same system, but in a separate category, I guess that's the best one because we have a back stock category that is not active for any customer to see. It's only active um, internally for us to see. So, but um, let's see. Um, okay, so um, okay, so that takes care of how we handle inventory. Um, and then, like I said, our online shop is um, connected. We have um, our in-store and we're dealing with our back stock. Um, right now, I do, um, we are working on all our photos and categorizing and everything um, be, to be able to get everything up online, find a quick and easy way for customers um, to order some products. I do think it's going to change our shopping habits a little bit. So we are working on some new products um, and packages that we're going to hopefully launch in the next couple of weeks for our customers to be able to um, either order online or come in and pick something up. Um, I think online ordering will always be there, but I think this whole situation has made things a little leery about importing items. I'm not 100% sure. But, um, you know, we definitely are pushing that our, that we control our items and our inventory and that they're handpicked and not completely imported um, as far as that. Um, now, as far as staffing, um, you know, our staff is pretty, um, pretty well versed. Um, um, so our um, our staff is pretty um, pretty well trained, but now is the time I think to go ahead and reevaluate all that because I think this whole situation is going to give us a better staffing pool to pull from. So for longest time we had a really hard time trying to get um, um, people to stick 
because everybody thinks working in the balloon shop is so easy and so fun and so cool. They don't, don't think it's as um, intensive as what it is. Um, they just think it's going to be a fun and easy job. And we've had people who don't stick around because they're like, this job is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, but I think we're going to have a better pool of people to pull from for that. And what I really think we need to do is to go ahead and train the staff now or retrain everybody to be able, again, to hit that ground running and to be able to, you know, move forward. So like, if you don't have a training manual or a um, employee manual, now's the time to get those in place so that once you go back to um, operations as normal, you're able to um, move forward and everybody's on the same page. Um, I am a stickler over the way things look in the shop. Um, I never, ever, ever want to walk in my shop and see a half deflated balloon or a balloon that looks like it's um, leaning or anything along those lines. Um, and that includes our sidewalk displays. And that's because I drill in their heads. We charge a premium for our balloons. And if you walk into a shop and you see a half floating balloon, what kind of message is that sending out to the consumer that has walked in here to buy a balloon that maybe my balloons aren't going to float great? Um, so um, we, I always am a stickler over that. I'm a stickler over the what, shop cleanliness. I always have been, um, but obviously we've taken it up a notch um, here where we've gone into disinfecting mode and leaving um, hand sanitizer and all that kind of stuff and um, um, cleaning the point of sale. So, um, so the cool thing is with the new um, point of sale, with, well, with our point of sale system, we're a, we were able to disable it and um, make it non-signature. So if um, that may be something in the future, um, if you do it where you can go to contactless, so like Apple Pay, where they can um, just touch their phone, which is what our POS system allows our customers to do, or they do not have to sign. We can bypass the signature line completely um, once they drop their card in there and then, um, or invoice them out. We do a lot of invoicing. Um, that is how we do all of our deliveries are done by an invoicing system, only because it's easier for us to keep um, track of all the order details. Um, and then, um, be able to print full order slips to be able to um, get. And then obviously when we do our deliveries, um, we've bypassed all the signatures now on all our deliveries and it's now gone to a photo confirmation on everything um, that they just send back to us, um, meaning staff wise, once a delivery is made and then we just store it with the um, actual order. So we know that there's a photo confirmation if there's ever any um, question and doubt about a delivery. So, um, so as far as displays, um, so the question was um, about which displays. So displays are constantly rotated. Um, we usually do a high and a low and we usually um, theme them. So we'll do a high centerpiece um, for a baby and then we'll do a low centerpiece for a baby. We'll probably do one boy, one girl, um, you know, and we try to segregate those. Um, we have display tables and we try to segregate those in front of the section in which they are um, displayed, the hard um, balloons are displayed on the wall or on the spinner um, in front of that section. So think of it like um, direction, um, sign directionals. Um, when you walk into a store and you see the sign that says meat in this aisle and, you know, produce this way and all that kind of stuff. That's the way we have our display set up so that they're sitting in front of that area. So if the customer walks in, they see the baby balloons, the baby balloons are in front of the baby section on the wall. So that is how we do that. And then as far as um, the shop window, the shop window we try to rotate um, pretty frequently. Um, we, 
I would say that's probably about every two weeks or so. Um, we do sell a lot of stuff directly out of our shop window. Um, we used to discount it, but now we don't discount that anymore unless it's something that I really want to just get rid of. Like, and by discount, I mean it's like 10%, you know, if you take this one. And most of the times it's just like a one-off that I just really want to get rid of or um, whatever. But um, let's see. Um, so as far as, um, let's see the rest of this place. So we do have a cash and carry. Um, we do have a cash and carry area where customers can come in and just, just balloons that are already pre-inflated um, and run out the shop. We do make sure our name is on everything um, that a customer purchases. Um, so if we have gift cards that go out to our gift deliveries, we make sure that um, our contact information is on there because not only did the person who bought it, but we want the person who received it. And if we're going obviously into a business um, where we're delivering, we want other people to see it. So it's that point of contact of how many people are going to see your name before it actually gets to the recipient. Um, and then most of the times, if it's a gift card that's enclosed and because our name's on it, most people save those. Um, so you're able to go back in and, um, you know, see our name again. Maybe it's next year or whenever somebody be like, hey, you know, there's a, their card sitting on the mantle. And somebody, you know, nosy people come up and they all the time they open up a card and they read it. So it's like, oh, this company. Um, so, um, so we do it that way. Also on any of the, um, so the displays that we actually already have in our shop, the customers can um, purchase. We don't not sell anything that's displayed in the shop. They can actually purchase it and walk right out the door. Um, sometimes we've repurposed stuff. Um, sometimes um, we have donation bags or we have um, older product. So we do have cubes. Um, if anybody's familiar with the IKEA um, cubes, those are what we use for display tables. And the cool thing about those is that we actually inflate. They hold an 18 inch balloon perfectly. So we air inflate those and we actually display eight of those. So we put them inside the cubes and on one side as the, customer, as the customer's walking through the shop, we have displays that sit on top of the table. So those are our air, our inflated displays. And then underneath the table, we have um, balloons in the cubbies. So we can actually get two per cubby. So the customers, as they're able to walk through the shop, can see some of the balloons that are um, on the wall, but in an inflated version. So kind of think like Party City, when you go in and you see all the balloons that are up on the um, wall, except ours are down in all the cubbies um, and they rotate periodically. So we, if we were to dismantle a display, we may go ahead and take that balloon and swap it out for one that's underneath one of the cubbies. And obviously eventually the seals go on these balloons. So we just go ahead and change them out. Um, I do have, so if you go and you look on our, um, any of our social media, we do have pictures of our store. We do have video tours. Um, we did do a Google um, walkthrough um, with Google. So it's on Google Maps. If you go in there, um, you can actually see a video tour of our store. That was about two years ago. So it has changed some, but not dramatically. Um, the bare bones are still exactly the same. Um, we have tweaked the store a few years. Um, and we're going to obviously tweak again with what's um, with the expansion that will end up taking over because we do have to remove a cinder block wall um, to be able to open up between um, our existing shop and the new side that we're going to take over. Um, so that's going to be about a month of um, chaos once all this 
um, goes through, but we do have video walkthroughs. Um, and for anybody who doesn't um, do video in their shop, um, even if it's back stuff, you really should and park it on YouTube and on your website and on your other social media um, channels because customers like to see what's going on. They also like to see what's going on um, behind the scenes. So that's a really big thing. And you can actually post in your Insta stories and then um, park it in your highlights so people can go back and kind of just see little um, bits and pieces. And I'm pretty sure we have some of that sitting there. Um, we do have a marketing company we work with. So they are um, tweaking a lot of stuff for us. So things change from day to day. Um, with them and then um you know um just constantly changing and adding more um more items and um more stories and more highlights um to everything um live um in the um facebook live and all that stuff is a great thing to do um as you're walking through so are employee introductions that um, we have done um, inside of our shop. So, um, okay, so as far as store layout, so if you can imagine this, um, in our shop, um, when you walk into our shop, we have a checkout area um, that has our point of sale and it's free floating, it sits in the middle of our shop. And if you find that video, you'll see that that has not changed. What used to be behind that used to be a consultation area, but we really outgrew it. So we actually removed it. Um, we found it was not the best use of space. Um, we do not, <clears throat> we do do consultations inside the shop. And we do not charge for that. But if somebody does require us to go on site, we actually do charge for that. Um, so, um, that starts at $75, depending on the client and the actual venue, and then they'll get that taken off of their order once they place an order with us. Um, and then um, once you come in and you walk through our shop, we do have a very, we have a nice large um, window um, that we use for display. Um, and then we have um, our balloon weights and we have a little baby section and then we actually have a consumer counter. So our consumer counter is where our staff will inflate balloons um, and, okay, so yeah. So our inflation counter is where our customers can see us inflate their balloons right there in front of them. We also have a um, viewing window, which was built into the shop when we first did it. And my goal was so that customers could always see what was being built in the back room. So right next to our consumer station, um, where, our custom, where our employees will inflate balloons for our customers right in front of them is a window on the side. And it's a full length, kind of think like a full length mirror um, that they can actually look into. And we did it really low so that the kids could look into it. And it's kind of like looking into a candy shop or a bakery shop. They can see what's being built in the back room. And it actually opens up a lot of conversations with people who don't know what actually you all are capable of. So when obviously we have a busy weekend and there's nothing but balloons everywhere and balloon columns and all that stuff, somebody will come in, oh, what's going on back there? And that opens an entire dialogue with them over something that they may not have known that we have already done um, or that we're capable of doing uh, some customers. So the question is, some customers may think that a display design is old and if they buy it, it won't last a lot, but they insist on buying on the spot. So my advice, um, we sell them all the time, um, we will refresh a balloon and we'll tell a customer we'll refresh it. We'll just give a shot of love. I've never had that problem where somebody's concerned over the length. Um, they typically ask how long a balloon will last. You know, we go into the how long latex balloons last, how long they'll last with high floats. Um, our foil balloons, um, 
we do tell them how long our displays have been up. We do have little tags that we put on them. Um, that is really just for the employees so they know because they may not have been there when the display was made, but it will tell them how long that display has been sitting there so that we can rotate them out on a regular basis. Um, again, we're constantly shifting. Um, I do not want my store to look the same from um, week to week to week because I do have customers that come in on fairly um, regular basis and I don't want them seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, the bare bones are the same, but the displays are constantly changing. Um, and if I really feel like I want to get rid of something, um, we'll kind of push that um, towards a customer and it seems to work. The, um, the, um, um, uh, train of thought, the customers who, um, really don't know what they want have a tendency to buy what they see so um, we really only show what we want to sell um, again that's why i i display higher end displays because that's what i want to sell um, they can get a honestly people can get a balloon anywhere they can get a balloon from the sh um from the dollar store they can get a balloon from the party store they can get a <clears throat> A balloon from the grocery store, they can get balloons from anywhere. You just, we want to be different. We don't want to um, just sell a balloon. We're selling that whole emotional factor that goes around with it. You know, that happiness, that joy, that celebration, congratulations, all that stuff. Um, that's what we sell. Um, you know, if they want just a balloon, that's really not what they've come in for. They've come in because they're trying to um, convey some sort of message um, or some sort of feeling that goes along with that. And that is really what we're selling. Um, balloons just happens to be the way that we're doing that. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything, is there anything else that you guys want to know that you specifically have a question about? So sometimes if um, we have some, um, some older displays that I really want to get rid of, um, those are the ones that I'll put outside. Um, so we do have a um, sidewalk sign. We also have um, mounts. We have um, large flower boxes outside. Refreshing the display. All right, so the unfew pieces. Okay, so this is what I was just saying. So the, um, the older displays that I definitely want to get rid of, um, unless they're actually like put together components, is those are the ones that we'll put outside. Um, if I have stuff that um, I really just want to get rid of, rid of, a lot of times I will thank customers with them or use them as little thank you gifts, um, or we'll drop them off if we're going somewhere um, with obviously with our name on it to be able to get them out of the shop. Um, that is what we'll do with those. And then um, as far as um, the other ones, we'll put them outside and we will um, attract attention um, that way from the sidewalk because there's um, many a times that customers don't realize you're there um, or it's like out of, out of their mind and so they're driving past and they see balloons floating outside and they're like, oh, gotta stop and get balloons. Um, I will say the one thing that we did do, I know um, most people kind of retreated with their hours and all that stuff. We actually expanded our hours once all this was going down. Um, I'm usually in the shop by 7 o'clock, 7.30 every morning. Um, so we actually opened up earlier um, to allow our customers to be able to um come in and shop when less people were around. So it gave them that opportunity to do that. Um, okay. 
Um, so awesome. Um, so um, so yeah. So we've expanded our hours. Um, made sure answered all our emails um, and communicated with our customers. So any other, I guess, specific questions as far as marketing, um, creating the online store, or um, how we have our retail um, set up? I know we're probably a little bit of a different beast um, than everybody else because of um, being retail and um, decor and only, like I said, only really selling balloons and nothing else except for balloons. So we do have the Qualitex wall. So we do have the QBB um, wall that um, runs 32 feet. Um, work only on Instagram. Um, you should not be working on Instagram only. You should also have a website. Um, I am a firm believer in websites. Um, if Instagram does not like you one day, they may shut you down. And then well, where will you be um, if that is your only form of communicating? I do not like direct messages from customers. I cannot keep track of that stuff. I can also not keep track when people are messaging us through Facebook. I will only communicate with people through email because I need one source of being able to track a customer and not being able to communicate with them and not only which channel I started communicating with them with. It's too confusing. It's too hard to keep everything together. So um, if somebody does reach out with us with a direct message um, through Facebook or through Instagram, um, we will direct them to an email. So how do I use the QBB wall with the bouquet book when doing decor? Um, so our QBB, we actually have two, um, two bouquet books. We have one that sits on our counter. We have another one that sits on our wall. Um, they're really just um, for customers to take a look at um, for a quick reference for the employees to be able to show the customers. It's also, if we're busy, it gives the customer something to look at or something to do. Um, as far as decor itself, it's really not a whole lot of decor in there other than centerpieces and some basic stuff. But we do um, tell the, show the customers like a couple of key items that are in there that they can use that um, decor related, kind of like centerpieces um, or bouquets or um, the giant designs with the three footers with the ribbon on them. There are a couple of quick link um, designs in there um, that they can um, um, that they can use kind of as column substitutes for pickup items. Um, so that's really how we use that. Um, the best type of promotion that's worked for you. Um, so as far as promotion, um, I mean, face-to-face, -face, getting people to know you um, is the best way. Um, I think building those relationships with people. Um, we do um, email marketing. I do not um, do a ton of um, promotion promotions as for, in per se as far as discounts and stuff like that. But we do reach out to our customers on a pretty regular basis, and you should try to capture as many emails because there are already um, customers who are interested in you. So our website um, gives you the opportunity to, um, or my website allows us the opportunity to capture with a drop down window um, somebody's email address. Um, we capture it through our point of sale. Um, we do capture it when we're doing um, orders or when customers are calling us. So we do have that information. Um, so we're able to build a good um, client base and a good marketing list. And that's usually where we start with that. Um, so when we put out um, something new or exciting, we will send an email blast out and we make it short and sweet. And we try to direct them to engage in our social media. 
That's usually the way we try to get them um, to engage with us a little more um, by pushing them that way. That's what we find really works the best. Designs, colors, patterns. Um, so where do I start with online decor sales? Um, number of designs, colors, and pattern options. So, um, we don't really do online decor sales. Most of that stuff at the moment is um, uh, over the phone or they come in because I find that customers use a specific verbiage that not necessarily do we use. So I will say that this is a little SEO um, tidbit for you. Pay attention to what your customers are saying. So when customers call um, and ask for a um, garland, they may be using the word arch um, or, um, you know, you hear a lot of, we hear a lot of customers use the word balloon tree. Um, and then for um, what we usually think they're talking about after all these years is a, um, is a um, cluster of balloons, like a big boot, tall um, bouquet column. So listen to what your customers are saying and use those as um, SEO um, keywords um, for your search engine, because that will help you with what um, customers are looking for and to rank better um, in that kind of stuff. Um, so as far as designs, though, and colors and pattern options, I mean, those things can be endless. I find if you give customers too many options, it gets very confusing. So um, we, we really only start with the basics. Um, when they say a, um, an arch or a column, you know, do you want spiral or do you want, you know, stacked? We, we usually send them like, three options and nothing more than three options because it gets extremely confusing. Um, we will put together a quick little um, um, kind of like sell sheet um, built in, um, built into our um, email that we send out to them and give them a choice of A, B, or C. Um, that's usually the way we do it. Okay, so how do I keep my cut? Keep the customer database. Okay, so our database actually is already built into our point of sale. Again, I have everything. This the program we use is pretty robust. It's not a hundred percent perfect. There are a few tweaks um, that would make it better, but it is constantly evolving. Um, so we keep everything in there. Um, I do use Mailchimp um, as the um, lead capture on our website, and then it communicates with our point of sale. So I'm able to load those email addresses into that to be able to create marketing materials that go out. I'm also able to um, track how many um, emails have been opened, how many um, customers have actually acted upon the email, meaning did they go and they do something? Did they purchase something? It's able to tell me how many um if a customer has purchased something or if an email blast has gone out what the average sale is and um how many actual people um took action upon that email like that is all important stuff you kind of need to know to know what um marketing is working for you and what marketing is not working for you um where do you start? Okay, so I think we already addressed that one about the online sales. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I did just didn't answer that question for you correctly. So people don't like to communicate through email. Um, well, then just have them pick up the phone. So we do have dedicated landlines. Um, we have um, we have three landlines in the shop, um, two which roll over 
into the third one. So um, usually if the phones are ringing, um, they just automatically roll over. So somebody's always able to answer a phone um, in there. So I would just say um, phone, I would much rather, honestly, I would much rather talk to a customer um, than um, be emailing them constantly back and forth because I think I can accomplish so much more in a phone call than I can by email because there's too many little components that they haven't answered it so back and forth and back and forth and they haven't fully answered a question. I can just five minutes, I can knock out a whole order as opposed to 20 emails back and forth. So. Um, kind of customer verbiage. Yeah, so I don't use industry jargon. Um, it's not meant for the customer. Um, I like to talk to my customers um, in something that they understand and not um, industry jargon because they honestly don't care. It's about them. It's not about us. Um, everything we do is customer driven. It's not industry driven. Um, Let's see, anything else? Any other questions? Oh, okay, so we already dealt with the emails. Um, I mean, I guess you find what works for you. Like I said, um, I'm not sure where you're located um, that they don't like to use email. But, um, you know, email works 24 seven. So um, also, if you do decide to use email, I do suggest that you set up a signature line. Um, all of our stuff has a signature line on it, um, along with links to all our social media um, and everything so that they can, um, so that they can um, just go ahead and click on that and then, direct them again if you're on all your so on so i'll jump back here on the social media so on your social media you should make sure that your social media is not a personal account but that these are all business accounts um and the biggest reason is that it allows you to um get analytics and insights on it so you can actually get um a gold mine of information about your customers um it also allows you to run promotions and stuff like that um so um do we have a standard tabletop design that customers can interchange the designs on i mean we have many of them um those are in our books in our um shop the customers can see we always have um this standard tabletop displays are always um on display in our shop um, for everybody to see and to go ahead and, um, you know, we can show them how we can change it and we usually offer three options on it. Um, pretty much a small, smaller version than a mid-sized version than the larger version. And again, we usually show the, um, two higher end ones. Um, if we do a pretty basic one, we usually add embellishments to it, um, just to upsell it and um, create a higher price point. Again, people like glitter and confetti um, and that type of stuff in their items. So when they know that that's an upsell um, and you take that away, that's really what they attracted them to it. So they'll come back and they'll pay that higher price point for a better display. So what advice do you give? decorating events um so uh, to step in okay shop specializes in deliver and small to medium designs for all occasions what advice do you give us to step into big decorating events decorating okay so um i mean we do a lot of corporate events um and then we do a lot of higher end private events so um, as far as stepping into big events like that, um, the balance is to be able to have somebody who can manage and run that shop or somebody who can manage and run the, 
the event. You can't do both and you can't do both well. You need to be able to delegate and delegate well and have somebody that can execute. Um, so um, in our hierarchy, um, obviously I oversee everything, uh, but then I have, you know, we have drop downs um, as to who does what. Um, we also have um, part-time girls who only do, um, you know, little little tidbits of whether it's um, preparing orders or um, cleaning up the back shop. That's what that's what their jobs are. So um, you know, it's just you got to figure out. Um, you, you know, you kind of got to figure out where you want to. Um, I guess where the money is. Um, for us, it's a nice mix of things. So I don't think that that's really going to affect us. It may affect the way we do events a little bit, but I don't think it's going to affect our events overall. So, um, okay. Any other specifics? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, I missed anything for you guys. I mean, I think the biggest thing is for everybody not to become complacent in all this. Um, retail is not for the um, weak. Um, it definitely takes commitment. You can't be there half the time and then not be there the other half of the time. So you need to figure out where your balance is on the retail side of it. Um, like I said, I do believe that um, we'll come out of this fine. I do believe that, um, you know, customers are going to come right back. I don't think that it's going to be that big of a, a um, dramatic effect. Um, it just may drop the dollar amount. The dollar amount may not be as high, but I'm hoping that the customer influx um, will make up for that. Um, because like I said, people will want to move ahead and will want to party and will want to, um, you know, celebrate events, especially all the ones that they've missed out. Do you um, I mean, face-to-face -face meetings is the way I would approach that for the first time, is introductions, um, creating a portfolio that you can show them. Um, we do have portfolios um, that are actually printed books in our shop for customers to come and look at. Um, as far as, um, you know, online now, your social media and all that stuff is an online portfolio for you for them to be able to um, look at and shop. So that's the way I would um, handle moving forward with um, corporate customers. Um, let's see. Um, so how do you go about hiring staff? Um, that is probably one of the hardest parts about retail um, is hiring staff and hiring good staff. Um, you know, um, training, um, being upfront, um, we have used, um, indeed we have used, um, all sorts of, um, hiring. We've run Facebook job postings. Um, we've done referrals. Um, I think the hiring pool is going to be much better now with all, everybody being laid off. Um, and um you know you get better people to pick from uh i don't know like starting salaries and all that kind of stuff or hourly rates um maybe they'll come down some with everything that's going on i'm not really sure but i'm anxious to see where that's going to come from um i have um the few people that i do have most of them are pretty good 
Um, you know, it's some are just part time um, high school kids, so they just come in and fill in the gaps. And a book for each type of celebration. Um, I don't, not particularly per celebration, we do have them broken up into categories. So we do have one that's columns and arches, um, you know, centerpieces, um, that kind of stuff, corporate events, outside decor. That's how um, we have those broken up, but not per se by theme. How do you choose to change out your inventory? Um, just want to know how to order. So we order through, um, I mean, we just feel, um, we do not keep discontinued product on our floor um, with the exception of um, what we're going to have to bring out from the back stocker, which we had reserved for our no joke sale, which um, obviously we won't be able to do now, but we will um, move forward um, with just leaving a spinner of um, older product out there. So we just decide um, it's a personal thing. Um, I work on trends, I work on themes, you work on what season's coming up. That's pretty much how we order. Um, so right now, obviously things are a little um, backlogged um, with seasons and all that stuff, but um, we've already had our graduation stuff. We've already had our graduation items picked. That's how um, we usually do things, probably at least a quarter in advance of what they are. So um that's how we order and i try to think about longevity so not necessarily do i want items that are let's just say um graduation only like we'll want a good mix of congratulations and stuff like that that we can carry out throughout the entire year and not necessarily be stuck with um as far as dated items we try not to um graduation and new years Try not to get us stuck with a lot of dated items because once that date has passed, obviously we're stuck with it. We can't, um, it's really hard to get rid of. These are a bunch of great questions. And um, let's see. Um, and like I said, definitely is not the time to stick your head in the sand and um, not move forward. And, um, you know, try to expand and make, pe make people see you and not think that you retreated and closed up shop because there are going to be a lot of businesses that are like that. Um, Let's see, as far as like, so as far as operating, so we are not open on Sunday. Um, we are not a retailer that is open on Sunday. Um, it does not affect us with our customers. They just come in and pick up their stuff on a Saturday and they tend to pay for um, high float if they need an item that is um, needs it. So they do not seem to have a problem with that. So Sundays are not a problem with us being closed. Um, I would definitely take, you know, our, like I said, our shop is pretty, um, please, do we have to ask permission? Um, in what's, what photos are you talking about your customer photos? Um, I usually don't post pictures, um, that have anybody's kids or anything in it, unless, um, you know, I've asked permission. As far as other people's work, um, no, do not use anybody else's work um, or photos. Credit um, is um, usually not enough. You need to ask permission. Oh, you're welcome.
Oh, absolutely. You can never sell down um, or you can never sell up. Sorry. You can always sell down. But um, once a customer sees a price point, they're not going to go up. Um, it's much easier to come down than it is to go up with a customer. Well, I hope everybody, wish everybody the best of luck. Um, if you do have questions, um, I will try to post a video um, once we get back and we get everything cleaned up. Um, we will definitely post a video of our shop and share it once we go through the expansion. Um, so you'll all be able to see that. And then um, see the way we walk through. And if obviously, if anybody's ever in the area, once travel bans lifted, you're more than welcome to um, give me a heads up and we can see about um, you stopping in for a visit. Awesome. All right. So um, let's see. Eh, no other questions? Oh, I love hearts. You too. Um, hey. Hey, Jill. There she is. Can you hear us okay? One second. I can't hear you. Can you hear us now? What about now? Oh, I can hear you now. Is that the mic fail? No, uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, we fixed We've the mic. We've got extra wires. <laughs> <laughs> we we uh, fixed the mic. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. I'm not sure uh, what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, just want to say um, that was absolutely fantastic and inspirational. Um, really in depth answers um, for the questions, but also your thoughts about how things are and what you're doing about it as well. There's quite a bit behind the scenes of, yes, exactly, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys sound so tired. Very, very, got, very, very odd staring at yourself on in four screens. That's yeah. odd. Well, <laughs> welcome to our world. <laughs> just if you just I, practice. I keep thinking I'm seeing something, and it's myself over here on the other screen. It's like, oh, they look, oh, that's me. What you need to do <laughs> is if you just practice in front of a mirror and take some time to reflect... That'll do. Ah. <laughs> See what I did there? It's like a joke. That was bad. <laughs> that was bad. No, there's really good, really good food for thought there, I think, for a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of a lot of things that you said we absolutely wholeheartedly agree with. Absolutely. Um, you know, to the to the core. So again, guys, please leave some love in the chat for Jill. That would be absolutely yes. fantastic. Somebody's saying there it was so informative that they're going to have to go back through the entire session with a notepad and just write everything down. So, yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Yeah. Well, if there, there are questions after the fact. I'm more than happy to answer anything. You can just shoot me an email. There shoot we go. I really appreciate that, Jill. Fabulous as always. Alrighty. Okay. Pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Take care, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. You okay, Jill? Bye for now. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Well, there we go, guys. Um, that was brilliant. Um, we just got to say a huge thank you to Jill Shortread for um, giving her time to sp spend some time with us and share her knowledge and experiences um, about running a retail business in such uh, unusual times, I suppose. <laughs>